Hey guys, so this is going to be part one of two of my home theater revamp series. As with any of this stuff, it takes a lot longer than you anticipate to get things done, especially when you're recording a video, as you might imagine. So this ended up taking around four or five days, which is why I'm splitting it into two parts. So this is part one, then we'll do part two in hopefully a few days, if not about a week from now. Anyway, just wanted you to know that. Let's go ahead and dive into the video. Hey everyone, today is finally the day. We're gonna be taking this 77 inch LG C1 OLED off of this entertainment stand here. Hopefully the camera's tracking me so you could see it. Putting it on a floor stand, putting it as far back as possible on the curtains here, which would also mean that we're gonna take this center channel out of this little cubby hole here and bring it up here. So I'm really excited about that. I'm also going to be doing something I didn't even mention in the last video. When I first set everything up a couple years ago now, it's been almost a couple years, I wired for back surrounds as well as side surrounds. So the back surround speaker cables are in the drop ceiling. I'm just kind of wrapped up. I bought a couple speaker stands for right now. I'm going to be adding uh, back, left, and right surrounds. Yeah, I know this room is small, but I figured, you know what? It was cheap. I have the speakers hanging off to the side anyway. They're just sitting there doing nothing. Might as well put them to use, right? Let's uh, let's just try it out. Who cares? Now, the stands I bought were height adjustable. I think they're like Pearl Smith or something like that. And the reason for that is they need to clear the backs of the Valencia theater seats. The backs on those come up about 45 to 46 inches off the ground. So yeah, this should be more than enough. I might have to put the stands on top of subwoofers. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm not too concerned with that. I'm also not uh, going to try to source out some BS22s because honestly, the likelihood of me upgrading my speakers in the next year or so is pretty high. Um, I've been running for, with these speakers for a long time and it's uh, almost due for an upgrade. I feel like the subwoofer situation is kind of where it's at. That is kind of the plan. I don't think I'm forgetting something, but I just wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. So this video might be kind of rough. I don't know. You're coming along with me. Um, this isn't going to be some highly polished piece. I mean, I've already been talking for three minutes. We haven't even started yet. I'm like the master of long-winded intros, I feel like sometimes. But anyway, I just want to say right off the bat, thank you guys for checking this video out. Uh, I'm going to go and get started. Might be a lot of time lapse in this video with voiceover, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's do it. So obviously I need to get all of the gear out from the front here, minus the subwoofers. And I also decided to dust because holy shit, that is dusty. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. Wow. I guess my hand only reached that far. So over the years, I found that it's easier to dust as you go along. And I know that this is not interesting at all. But if you dust as you go along, when you go to put things back in, they're pretty much ready to go. You may have to wipe them off near the end and that's okay, but you're getting the bulk of the dust out. Also, don't leave discs in players when you move them around. It's an easy way to ruin a disc. So this is gonna be really hard to see down here. All the wires I'm gonna label, I'm not concerned with the HDMI cables, which are right over here. Um, those are, I, I, I already just made a note in my phone about what HMI cables go to what, and I know which cables go to what device. It's the speaker cables that are more important, uh, anyway. And, uh, yeah, also this little, it be kind of hard to see here, but this little eARC extractor, where are you? Where are you? Here, here we go. This little guy here, the eARC extractor, is, uh, something we have to make note of, or I have to make note of, of which... Uh, input and output goes to this because this is how I get audio uh, out of the TV into this receiver, which does not support eARC. So I'm going to actually have to do this all off camera. Sorry about that, guys. I was hoping to be able to show you the stuff that was going on behind here, but I just don't think it's possible. Maybe I'll show you like when I hook everything back up. Honestly, it's not that interesting. It's just, you know, something I wanted to show you. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to do that off camera. And uh, I'll be back. So I actually unhooked everything from the TV to get the TV off the stand. Thank you, Trish, my wife, for helping me out with that. And I went to cleaning, and now I have access to the back of the stand for all the wires and stuff because there's a lot. All right, so as you can see, TV is off the stand. 
I have moved the stand out. I have ample room now under here to basically get inside here. So center channel is down in this guy here, if you could see. I'll we'll turn the camera. I think if I remember correctly, I actually don't have to take both sides of this off. I just have to take the one right here. This is a network switch uh, for here, which I've already unplugged. No worries there. Um, so I think uh, just have this, these two kind of, I, don't, I can't remember what you call these screws, but basically they kind of pull this part into this part because they're attached here with a couple of, uh, of uh, bolts or not bolts, I can't, I don't remember. Someone in the comments let me know what they're called. And then these are just um, like Allen screws. So if I take these four off and then loosen these, I should be able to just take this side off or put it over, grab the center at an angle and then uh, take it out. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's see the center channel right here let's see if i could just get it on this side uh, now can we is it gonna work can we get it to work oh no i think we do have to take that other side off no ah it's okay you saw how long this one took that one's gonna take the same amount of time so let's go do that you know i'm watching this now thinking to myself why the hell didn't i remove the subwoofer cables from the mini dsp or the cat 6 cable from the network switch and the only thing i could think of it was probably three or four in the morning and I was just running on fumes at this point, trying to get stuff done. I think I was probably working on this for about 18 hours on the first day by myself. So we'll chalk it up to just overall tiredness. So now we're at a point, uh, the entertainment stand is out of here. I got the center channel out. And basically I'm looking at all of this wiring back here. Uh, if I look over here, the camera should track me. Oh man. Um, yeah, so a lot of uh, CAT 6 cable, a lot of HDMI, stuff like that. I do know where every little piece goes. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, undo the the zip ties, uh, you know, from all of the stuff, even the speaker cables, because I have a ton of zip ties anyway. I'm just going to redo everything once I set it back up. It should take a little bit more time, but I think, you know, doing it right this time, the way I want it done. That's kind of where I'm at. Probably gonna time lapse this next section because it's just a lot of stuff. So enjoy the time lapse. I'll be back when basically I go to put the stand together. I'm interested to see that. I know how high I want the TV from the bottom of the floor to the top. So um, I'll be measuring that and kind of bringing you along for that. Seeing how it kind of compares to maybe a wall mount that you guys have used before should be interesting. So yeah, let me get uh, these cables under control. So like many of you, I don't enjoy the cable management for the most part. I do have OCD, so it typically takes me longer, especially when I'm recording a video like this. But when I originally did the home theater build a couple years ago, I kind of skimped on the cable management because again, like many of you maybe, you kind of get to the end, cable management is one of the last things you do, and you just want to get things done. So you just rush through it, you don't do things the way they need to be done, and as a product reviewer, it kind of made it even harder to swap out components. So I'm hoping that doing the cable management the way I think it needs to be done this time will help out a lot. I already started doing this part, so I figured I'd bring you along. Um, basically, all of these uh, curtains, I need to measure the front here I don't want to take the curtains down. I don't want to kind of, I don't really have a way to lift them up. So I'm just kind of condensing them with some zip ties because I have a crap ton of them. And so that's what I'm doing. We're basically going to do uh, one here and one down there. I'm going to take them off once I'm done measuring and I know the center of the room. I might actually leave these until I kind of get everything squared and, and where it should be. Uh, in terms of like the TV, I just think like having access to everything behind here um, would be beneficial we can run wires do whatever we need to do so i'm just going to do that real quick this is going to make it super easy for me to see the bottom down here when i'm measuring uh, with my tape measure to see where the center of the room is i'm going to actually measure it on the bottom here and then from uh, the side walls just after the angled corners so that way 
Um, I have two two points of reference. You're kind of verifying. What's it saying? Measure twice, cut once. This is more like measure measure twice, place once. That way we get it right this time instead of it being off like it was last time. Whenever you get into the middle of a project, you're like, oh man, you have to remind yourself that the reason why you're doing it, part of it's like, this is my job. I need to do this. And the other part is like, no, but now I'm like, right now, I just want to get this done. I know that the benefits will outweigh all of this work. But uh, my OCD right now is going crazy because this room is small. I've got all the components from the stand over behind the camera. And yeah, it's just kind of like you always got to create a little mess right before you do all of this other stuff. So we are pretty much right at 110 inches. So that's 55 inches should be the center of the room. The TV stand that I bought is basically uh, got a big base to it as well. So what we could do is after we get it set up to make sure that it's centered with the room, we could measure each side of like basically from the corner to the base and make sure that they're the same distance on each side. What I am gonna do though right now is also measure from the wall behind the camera to the other wall across the way here. Pretty much right there, 145 and a half. Um, so, hey Siri, what's 145 and a half divided by two? 140 divided by two is 70. Hey Siri, what's 145.5 divided by two? 145.5 divided by 2 is 72.75. So 72 and 3 quarters is what we're looking for here. And we're pretty much on the money. We're like right in the center. So that matches up. We've double verified now. And we are good to go. I don't know why I didn't do that the first time uh, when I set everything up originally. I think I... I know I didn't eyeball it. I don't know. You know what it, it might have been? I might have realized after I put the TV on that it's slightly off center when I when I put the Valencia theater seats in the room. Because the Valencia theater seats are right in the center of the room. Like the, the middle armrest, the center of that is the center of the room. So right at 72 and a uh, three quarters is where it's at. So uh, yeah, so we're there. We've found our middle spot. We'll get the TV stand in here. I'm gonna have to move some stuff around because, and by TV stand, I mean the floor stand that I bought. Uh, the TV stand is not as big as I thought it was gonna be. Here's the box. Uh, so you can kind of see how big it is. We had ordered a, a coffee table to replace the one in our living room and that box is massive. And for some reason in my brain, I was just thinking that this, that box, which was huge, is the TV stand. Nope, this is a TV stand box. Um, it is the right one. It's for an 85 inch TV. Obviously the LG C1 is a 77 inch, so this is more than enough. Um, the weight requirements or the, the maximum weight capacity here, double or over double of what the TV actually is without the stand. The stand on the LG C1 is uh, huge. Why is it framing me so? There we go. I'd say we're getting close to done, but uh, yeah, uh, we're not anywhere close to done, unfortunately, but uh, we're getting closer, which is good. It's currently, um, you can see that 11 20 at night i stay up late so i'll probably get as much done as i can by myself wait for her to get up in the morning and then bam put the tv on there so cool the tv stand actually really surprised me it's fairly inexpensive at around 100 to 120 dollars depending on when you look it up and it's really pretty beefy the actual base of it is pretty heavy it's not super light. It's also made of metal, not of glass. So there's no real structural integrity problems with that. And I didn't really fear for the weight of the TV on this thing as I was putting it together. It seems like it'll hold it pretty well. So right now, basically what I'm doing is I want to measure where uh, I want the bottom of the TV. I know that I want the TV about 33 inches above, like from the bottom of the floor. The top of this is 23 inches. I want about 10 inches of clearance for a center channel. That's so like if a center channel is nine and three quarters or nine and a half, I still have a little bit of leeway there. So but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the bottom of the floor up to here, I'm gonna mark where I want the bottom of the TV with a tape. I know that from the top bar here on the TV, no, you can't see me, is 20 inches. The next one down is 18 inches. And then the one down uh, from that is 16. So we have three spots to choose from. Essentially, I just wanna mark on here where I want the TV and that way we can just go uh, right from there. So it might've been easier to do 
earlier, but you know what? We're here now. So, from the, from the actual floor to there's a uh, the, uh, I kind of eyeball it a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, it doesn't need to be level either, but you know, my OCD is what it is. If I were to measure from the top here, I know that right here, if I, if I measure it, if I put it on the top one, 20 inches down, it's gonna be way too much. Uh, so what we might need to do is, uh, we might need to move this up. And then we might also need to move the mounting brackets on the TV up to basically get us to where we need to be. It, it's a little, it's not, it, sound, it makes it sound harder than it actually is. Uh, so right now, um, what I might do is, uh, because basically we need, uh, let's see, right? <laughs> the bottom of the TV right now would be roughly, or about 10 inches from here. We need to double that, right? So 20 inches would bring it down 20 inches would bring it down to about right here where the, the tape measure is that you can't even see. So if you've mounted a TV before on the wall or put a stand together like this, you know that it can be pretty stressful. And I, I'm apologizing now if this is cringy at all because I'm not very well versed in any of this TV mounting stuff. I'm measuring two, three, four times to make sure that the TV is the height that I want it because I really didn't want to have to take it back off of the stand to make adjustments but i ended up having to take it off the stand later for other reasons which i'll talk about on the second video but anyway measuring over and over again making sure all of this stuff is where it needs to be is really important was to me my wife god lover does not like helping me lift heavy things i don't like lifting heavy things like this because it's expensive and it can break and i don't want that to happen yeah okay uh I changed something back here because uh, I didn't measure properly. <laughs> I was actually measuring from the top part of the tape here. If you see the blue painter's tape. Yeah, I put, uh, it was, I was supposed to be measuring to the bottom. So uh, yeah, so basically instead of 11 and three quarters, it should be 13 and one quarter. So that's where we've kind of ended up. We may be off by an eighth or something. I'm not gonna fret too much about that. Um, it's already like I've already spent way too much time doing this. Having said that, now it's time to get the TV stand centered on the wall back here so we can get the TV on the stand and then we can move on. Like we're kind of getting like a lot of shit done and I'm super excited. Yay. So getting the TV floor stand centered was pretty paramount to this whole process. It was the other thing that I really wanted to do outside of getting that center channel out from that little cubby hole. And basically before everything was just off centered and I didn't like that. Also, I noted that the entertainment stand that we have has these middle supports for supporting larger TVs. Well, I didn't really have to worry about that anymore, but that also meant that where they were by default or where they were installed originally, I couldn't slide the entertainment stand all the way forward like I wanted to. So I had to move those out from the center more towards the middle of each side of the entertainment stand. Not a big deal because again, I'm not going to be putting super duper heavy components on here, especially right in the center. So it just was not an issue. Even if I get separate amplification down the road, it's really not gonna be a big deal because I'll put it on either side of the entertainment stand. So here I'm just checking to see how far I can put that entertainment stand up, make sure that I can get it centered with the floor stand and everything and that everything looked good. I'm also checking the level of the TV on the TV floor stand itself because that's also important. I didn't want it kind of tilted to the left or right. And then now I'm just kind of going in and doing some preliminary wiring, basically HDMI cables, power cables, things like that. I do eventually move the surge protector you see there and also my battery backup from back behind to each side of the entertainment stand so I have access to it anytime I want. And that's just gonna make it so when I do swap things out, it's gonna be a lot easier. So that's gonna pretty much do it for part one. I am working on part two. Guys, stay tuned, it's gonna be coming out soon.